computers are acting funny today. No chat yet. Says there's one viewer so far. There we go, big rays in here. Oh, no problem there, big ray. Always like to send bonus items sometimes, and I had a few more of those left. I bought a round of them. Giving them to some of my faithful Christians in the channel. Put on the whole armor of God. God. Again, Mark, you're very welcome. Don't have a lot scheduled for today. We got Mini Minosa as our Hall of Famer for today. We do have 240 entries, so we got two prizes on the wheel so far. It says four viewers, two thumbs up. Don't know if we'll reach the double digits today or not, but if we do, We'll have some fun. So let's see. 206, one more minute. For the early birds left here. Dragon fan, Tim, still not here. How you down here? Tim? Get this ready here. Crossover Paranormal Societies in the house. Couldn't be at your whatnot Saturday afternoon. Have started coaching the grandkids. Oh, no problem. That takes precedence for sure. Don't worry about that. Um, this coming week after my live stream on Friday, I'm going to do my whatnot auction. About 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Might hop on a little bit early. We'll see what happens. Didn't. Just watching a movie. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, and the early birds. I'm going to get everybody logged in. We're going to get right into our trivia. We got two trivias today that we're going to do. Uh, Mini Minosa's biography. And then we'll open up this Stadium Club blaster box. After this one, I've got three more left. So if we get to double digits today, we'll do another blaster box. And we might be empty handed by the end of the week, which is fine because Friday is going to be a long day for me very close friend of mine died suddenly and had a funeral Friday evening. No, no. That's no problem. I gotta try and reach out to Mickey also. Uh, I owe him a big apology. Maybe that's why he hasn't talked to me since. But uh, gotta check out one of his dreams soon and just let him know I've got a a bigger package of some Julio's coming to him. That's the way I'm going to have to make it right on that one. But let's get up here real quick. We had Big Ray was first in the live chat with a 2+. plus. We go through the early birds here real quick. Followed by Dragon Fan Tim that's not here. 
but he really is. That's fine. Then we got Crossover Paranormal Society. Cops is here for 2+. plus. Big Ray, Big Ray, Dragon Phantom, Big Ray, Big Ray, Big Ray, Dragon Phantom, Sensei Domino's in the house with a 2+. plus. I believe that's everybody. Let me do the refresh. I'm all caught up here. I'm going to get ready to go into the trivias. So, speak now or forever hold your peace, but I've got Big Ray. I've got Cops. I've got Dragon Fan Tim, and I've got Sensei Domino. Did I miss anybody? Let me know in the chat real quick. And if not, we'll continue on with our trivia. Okay, the first one is going to be a... It's got six answers, but if you get all six matched up to their cor correct teams, you'll get seven points. If not, whoever gets the most correct, other than the six correct answers, will get that many points. So if you get four right, and you're the only one that got four right out of the six, you'll get four entries. Okay? But if you get all six correct, if you get all six correct, sorry, my closed captioning's in the way here. If you get all six you'll get seven entries okay and then our second one for the day is going to be uh, a five pointer okay so we got a seven pointer and a five pointer if or whoever gets the most correct answers again if you don't get all six correct uh, if you get five correct you'll get five if you get four correct you'll get four you can see my shadow there right all right but we're gonna do yesterday Monday April the 6th okay and actually real quick let me just while we're waiting on this ready too all right so here we go with today's trivia answers first oh okay okay will that make it easier for you all right so when we get down to it remember I'm only going to go through it once but I'll do give the answers first then I'll do the 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 names and then the answers once again okay Yoda Vintage Car, hello everyone, just here for a quick thumbs up. Thanks, but if you leave too quick, it won't count, and then it'll revert back, but that's okay. I've got two thumbs up so far. Whatever we end up with, that's what we end up with. I always, remember, you always it's always best to go in real quick, to jump in for five minutes in a stream. When you come in, give a thumbs up, and then leave right away, it's like null and void. We have that happen. People sit, tell me they give me a thumbs up and I look and I'm like, well, it's not there anymore because they probably left the stream already. But that's okay. Whatever we get is what we get and what we got is what we get. Okay. So the baseball, baseball birthdays for yesterday, Monday, April the 8th, uh, the total eclipse on the East Coast, uh, for those that were in the path of the total eclipse, uh, but the birth baseball birthdays for yesterday were Catfish Hunter, Gary Carter, Kirby Higby, and Felix Hernandez. I don't know about Higby, but Felix Hernandez might get in. Of course, Gary Carter's a Hall of Famer, and Catfish Hunter's a Hall of Famer. Okay, so here are the answers for the six 
broadcasters. Okay, so you got to think your put your thinking caps on this one. Okay, all right. So the question reads: Match these famous broadcasters with their teams. So the answers for the teams are as follows: A is the White Sox, B is the Braves, C is the Dodgers. D is the Pirates, E is the Tigers, and F is the Padres. So match these famous broadcasters with their teams. Number one is Ernie Harwell. Number two is Bob Prince. Number three is Red Barber. Number four is Skip Carraway. Number five is Jerry Coleman. And number six is Hawk Harrelson. Okay? And again, the names are as follows. Or the teams are as follows. A is the White Sox. B is the Braves. C is the Dodgers. D is the Pirates. E is the Tigers. And F is the Padres. So again... Because this one's a little bit more difficult, I'll go through the numbers again and then I'll type it in the chat and then you can start putting your guesses in. Again, number one is Ernie Harwell, number two is Bob Prince, number three is Red Barber, number four is Skip Carey, C A R A Y, number five is Jerry Coleman, and number six is Hawk Harrelson. typo there. Alright, go ahead and start your trivia answers now. As I get my little... Let's see, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes on this one since it's a tougher one. Just in case you're wondering. I didn't have no lunch yet, so I don't want to fall asleep on you. Got to eat some Swedish fish to keep me going. So if you know some of the famous broadcasters, and you can match them with your teams, again, if you get all six correct, you'll get seven points. And you have to be the first to do it. So if you can just match up the broadcaster names with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 with their teams A, B, C, D, E, and F. While you're working on it, I'll read it through one more time. Match these famous broadcasters with their teams. Again, one is Ernie Harwell, two is Bob Prince, three is Red Barber, four is Skip Carey, five is Jerry Coleman, and six is Hawk Harrelson. And the teams are as follows. A is the White Sox, B is the Braves, C is the Dodgers, D is the Pirates, E is the Tigers, and F is the Padres. Oh, that's cool. You get to see the Eclipse? Big Ring? That's pretty cool if you did. Last time I got to see it was in 2017 when it was mainly Oregon, but we were just north of them. So I was able to experience it. They gave us the little uh, sunglasses at work that morning, which turned out to be pretty nice because I actually got to see the eclipse.
Michael Huber, how you doing, buddy? Glad you're here, Michael. We're having fun. Let me get you added on here for uh, two entries for being in here, young man. Appreciate you. Glad you're graduating this year and heading off to Pensacola. Mm -mm. Okay, so far, Big Ray's in the lead. He's got four correct. We'll go up one more here. Big Ray has got four correct. And we'll go till 2.22. Give you guys a little extra, extra time here. Plus, I need a couple fish or two. Get up to eight viewers. Let me do a refresh. By the time we get back, we should be getting closer to 222. As soon as we hit double digits, you guys can just let me know if you see it. Then I'll do a refresh that way. How's that sound? Alright, we got 221. One more minute. Next trivia question will be a lot easier. But it'll be a five-pointer. So far, Big Ray's in the lead with four out of his six, correct? We got five thumbs up. We're halfway there to double digits. refresh one more time when it hits 222 then I'll go over our answers here so you guys will know the whole lineup and you can help me out all right I'm gonna refresh the chat that way I'll know everything is done there we got 222 and let me read through it the broadcasters match these famous broadcasters with their teams all right so I'll go through and verify, and you guys tell me if I got it right. Okay? Let me go here real quick and refresh this live chat. Get to the live feed here. And go away. Thank you. Oh, close off the closed captioning here. Thank you. Oh, that's okay, Huber. It is, it is a tough one. You got to know the old time broad, famous broadcasters, too. So, you probably do better on the second one coming around here. All right. So, let's go here with everything we've got down there. And that last one don't count there. Well, it is 222. What do we got? Big Ray got it first, 
So let's go through. I'm going to go through, and you guys can verify what you've got. Match these famous broadcasters with their teams. Okay. So number one, Ernie Harwell, of course, was the Tigers. Two, Bob Prince. Bob Prince was the, Do <coughs> the Dodgers. Okay, Red Barber, oh no, Red Barber was the Dodgers. Uh, Rob Prince was the Pirates. Skip Carey was the Braves. Jerry Coleman was the Padres. And Hawk Harrelson was the White Sox. That last guess was definitely after the cutoff time. But that's, that's good. You kept trying there, Dragon Fan Tail. Let's see what we got. Harwell was the Tigers, yes. Hawk was the White Sox. Barber was the Dodgers. Carey was the Braves. Uh, Prince was the Pirates. And Coleman was the Padres. But that was a little bit late there, Dragon Phantom. So Big Ray's going to get the, the four pointers there. And you had four up above before you had it. So I'll give you each four. How's that sound? Does that sound fair? We each had four and two different fours at the same time. So Dragon Fan Tim, you get a four. Big Ray gets a four. And now we'll move on to our last trivia and then we'll get into our biography. Okay, it shows on the back here. 1E, 2D, 3C, 4B, 5F, 6A. Okay, thank you very much for that. Valiant try on that one. I didn't think anybody at first would get all six correct. Because that's one you have definitely have to research on. But the next one is going to be for today, Tuesday, April the 9th, 2024. Let me do a refresh here real quick. Alright. And it's entitled Team History. Again, there's one correct answer. One correct answer. And it's worth five points if you get it correct. Whoever gets it first. There you go, Big Ray. I figured that was fair enough. Okay, so. Let's get here. Uh, Again, there's one answer, the first correct answer in the chat. After I type it in, add it into the chat, we'll get the uh, we'll get the five points. Five points, first correct answer. Ready? Team history. Oh, the baseball birthday. Sorry for today. Are Doc White, Nate Colbert, Claude Passo and Grame Lloyd. Alright, theme history. Which of the following Red Sox hit a home run in their last major league at bat? A is Ted Williams. B is Bobby Kelty. C is Juan Diaz. D is Don Gao. And E is all of the above. Go ahead and start your guessing now.
Michael E. Hubers took a wild stab and guessed correct. Huber, you get the five points. Michael, you get the five points. Either that or you know your Red Sox history. All right, so it is all of the above, okay? You read the answer back here, it says E, all of the above. The most recent was Bobby Kelty, who took his last at bat in game four of the World Series on October 28, 2007. The Red Sox swept the Colorado Rockies in four games to win the series. Luck was just on my side. I thought D was all of the above. No, E. Da, uh, A was Ted Williams. B was Bobby Kilty. C was Juan Diaz. D was Don Guile. And E is all of the above. Eat all fit butter begins at sundown, whatever that means. So there we go. Tomorrow will even be easier. It's just going to be a true or false, so it'll be whoever gets the correct answer first tomorrow for five points. Or for five entries, I should say. So that takes care of everybody there. We'll put this away till the end of the stream. All right. Let me put my pen off to the side here. Again, what do we got? Five thumbs up. Again, double digit thumbs up if we get to 10 or more. We'll open up another box, but we are going to do Mini Minosa for our biography today. Anybody know anything about Mini Minosa? If you don't know much about them, you're going to learn about them. This Hall of Fame. This is the title of this stream today is Hall of Fame Biography Episode 216. It means we're getting closer. We only got to get up into the 360 something or 370 Hall of Famers I think we have now. So we're more than halfway through the Hall of Famers for sure. All right, we did the two trivia times two, and we'll do the 2023 Top Stadium Club Blaster Box, possibly two. We'll check later to see how many we've got. Uh, just had a 1963 Mini Minosa show up in the mailbox today. Good timing. There we go, the Cuban Comet. All right. But on his Hall of Fame card here, we've got Saturino, Orestes, Armas, Arietta, Minoso, commonly known as Mini Minosa or the Cuban Comet. That was commented there by uh, Sensei Domino. Uh, he played for uh, New York in the NNL. 1946-48, Cleveland in the American League, 1949-51 and 58-59, Chicago in the American League, 1951-57, 60 and 61, 64, 76, and 1980, and St. Louis in the National League, 1962, Washington in the American League, 1963. So, electrifying left fielder from Cuba blazed the path for generations of Latino baseball players to follow as the first dark-skinned Latin American to play in the American League or National League. Lifted Negro National League's New York Cubans to 1947 championship before setting the American League ablaze with his base running and clutch hitting for go-go White Sox of the 1950s. He led the American League in base running and clutch hitting for go-go White Sox of, oh I just read that, led the American League in stolen bases three times and triples three times from 1951 to 1961 while earning nine All-Star Game selections and three Gold Glove Awards returned to the White Sox to extend big league career into five different decades across 20 major league seasons and hit 299 with 195 homers, 216 steals, and a 387 on-base percentage. 
So there you go, Mini Minosa is our biography for today. And let's get rolling here. Actually, before I do, let me get a sip of water going on here. So, Satarino Orestes Nini Armas Arieta Menosa, Spanish. No, uh, that's, a, that's one of those long Spanish names. <laughs> November 29, 1923 is when he was born. And March 1st, 2015, when he passed away. Nicknamed the Cuban Comet was a Cuban professional baseball player and he began his baseball career in the Negro Leagues in 1946 and became an all-star third baseman with the New York Cubans. He was signed by the Cleveland Indians of Major League Baseball after the 1948 season as baseball's color line fell. Minoso went to become an all-star left fielder with the Indians and Chicago White Sox. The first Afro-Latino in Major Leagues and the first black player in White Sox history as a 1951 rookie. He was one of the first Latino Latin Americans to play in the MLB All-Star game. Minosa was an American League All-Star for seven seasons and Gold Glove winner for three seasons and when he was <coughs> in the 30s. He battled he batted over 300 for eight seasons, and he was the American leader in triples and stolen bases three times each. And in his doubles and total bases once each, Willie Mays, 179, and Minoso, 167 steals, have been widely credited with leading the resurgent, resurgence of speed as, offensive, as an offensive weapon in the 1950s. Minosa was particularly adept in reaching base, leading the American League in times hit by pitch, a record 10 times, and holding the league mark for career times hit by pitch in 1959 to 1985. Minosa, as a defensive standout, led the American League left fielders in assists six times and in putouts and double plays four times each. Minosa was one of the most popular and dynamic players in White Sox franchise history. He helped the Go-Go White Sox become one of the premier teams in the 1950s and 60s and rare power threat on a team known for speed and defense. Minoso also held the White Sox record for career home runs from 1956 to 1974. Minoso left the major leagues following the 1964 season, but went on playing and managing in Mexico through 1973. He rejoined the White Sox as a coach and made a brief but highly publicized player appearance in 1976 and 1980. He became the third player to get a hit after the age of 50 and second player to appear in, major, in the major leagues in five different decades. Nick At Atrock is the other. Minoso's White Sox number uniform, number nine, was retired in 1983 and a statue of him was unveiled at U.S. Cellular Field in 2004 and Minosa was elected to the Cuban Baseball Hall of Fame in exile in 1983 and to the Mexican Professional Baseball Hall of Fame in 1996. In 2014, Minoso appeared for the second time as a candidate for the National Baseball Hall of Fame Golden Era Committee. Uh, by election ballot for possible Hall of Fame consideration in 2015. He and the other candidates, including former White Sox teammate Billy Pierce and two other former players from Cuba, Tony Oliva and Luis Tian, all missed induction in 2015. 
he and Oliva were ejected to the Hall of were elected to the Hall of Fame in 2021. A few more here. I can't see me, but I know you can see me. Okay. So as far as his early life, Minoso was born in Perico, Cuba, near Havana, the son of Carlos Armos and Cecilia Arrieta. His birth, date of birth is often cited as being 29th of November, 1923. However, his Republic of Cuba 1951 driver's license and his first Topps baseball cards 1952 number, card number 195 list his date of birth as November 29th 1925 the Minosa baseball card that was handed out by his family to visitors who stopped by to pay their respects for Minosa at a remembrance held for him At a Chicago church before his funeral print has printed on it 1924 to 2015 boy that was the wrong fish to put in my mouth mm got wedged between one of my teeth. His father worked in the fields of the sugarcane plantation on which the family lived. His mother had four other children from a previous marriage and had the surname Minosa from her first husband. While playing with his older brother Francisco, Orestes became referred to as Minoso too, and he did not correct them. Later on, he would legally add Minosa to his name when he became a U.S. citizen. Minosa grew up playing baseball with two of his brothers and, in fact, managed his own team while working on his father's plantation, finding players and the necessary equipment himself. In 1941, he moved to Havana to live with his sister and play baseball there. As far as his baseball playing career, Cuba and the Negro Leagues. Minosa played professional baseball as a third baseman in Cuba and in the Negro Leagues. He signed a contract with the team from the borough of Mariano in 1945 for $150 a month and moved into the Negro Leagues with the New York Cubans the next season and doubled his monthly salary. Batting leadoff for the Cubans, he had 309 in 1946 and followed up with a 294 average in 1947. As they won the Negro League World Series over the Cleveland Buckeyes, he was the starting third baseman in the East in the 1947 All Star game and again in 1948. Minosa remained with the Cubans until signing with the Cleveland Indians, organizing organization during the 1948 season and started his major league career with the Dayton Indians of the Central League batting 525 in 11 games. As far as the Cleveland Indians, on April 19, 1949, Minosa made his major league debut with the Cleveland Indians, becoming the first black Cuban in the major leagues. He drew a walk as a pinch runner in the seventh inning of a 5-1 road loss to the St. Louis Browns. He got his first hit in his next game on May 4th, a single off Alex Kellner, in the sixth inning of a 4-3 win over the Philadelphia Athletics. The next day, he hit his first home run off Jack Kramer in the second inning of a 7-3 win over the Boston Red Sox. 
Minosa had little further chance to make an impression, however. The Indians were signing black players more aggressively than any other team in the American League. But coming off their victory in the 1948 World Series, they were the strongest team in baseball. They had little opportunity to get Minoso in the lineup as a rookie. As they played Ken Kelter at third base, and he had only 16 at-bats through May 13th before being sent to the minor leagues. Minosa was sent to the San Diego Padres of the Pacific Coast League for the rest of the 1949 season and all of 1950 batting 297. The first year following up with a 339 average and 115 runs batted in. Minosa joined the Indians to start the 1951 season, but the team still could not find a spot for him in the lineup, as the Indians had Al Rosen at third base and Larry Doby, Dale Mitchell, and Bob Kennedy in the outfield. He consequently had only 14 at-bats in eight April games. Then his move to the Chicago White Sox. On April 30, 1951, the Indians sent Minosa to the White Sox in a three-game trade involving the Athletics, getting relief pitcher Lord Lou Brissy from the Athletics in exchange. On May 1st, Minosa became the first black player on the White Sox, hitting a 415-foot home run in Comiskey Park on the first pitch of his first at-bat against the New York Yankees. <coughs> He was an instant star, maintaining a batting average of over 350 through most of the first half of the season, and finished the season hitting 324, second in the American League behind the 344 mark of the Athletics. Ferris Minosa was named for the first time to the All Star roster reserve player, becoming, along with White Sox teammate. Uh, Chico Carrasco and Washington Senators pitcher Connie Marrero, one of the first Latin Americans named to an All-Star game. That year, he scored 112 runs, one short of DiMaggio's league-leading total. Minoso followed up with several years of outstanding play for Chicago, and he led the American League in steals both in 1952 and 1953 with 47 total, and topped the league with 18 triples and 304 base total bases in 1954, appearing in the All-Star Game three years starting in 1954. Minoso also represented a rare power threat for the White Sox due to the dimensions of Comeskey Park. The White Sox were the only major league team who did not have a player hit 100 home runs for them prior to World War II. On September 2, 1956, he hit his 80th home run with the Sox. Off Hank Aguirre and a 4-3 win over the Indians, breaking Zankiburo's team record. In later seasons, he played with the, the Cleveland Indians, the Chicago White Sox, and the St. Louis Cardinals. And then uh, also did a stint with the Washington Senators, and his contract was sold to the Washington Senators prior to the 1963 season, and after hitting 229, he was released that October. On October 12th, he played in the first and only Hispanic American All-Star Game at New York's Polo Grounds. Then he went on to the Chicago White Sox. He signed with the White Sox before the 1964 campaign, but appeared only 30 games that year, batting 226 almost exclusively as a pinch hitter, and hit his last home run in the second game of a doubleheader on May 6th off Ted Bowsfield in the seventh inning of an 11 4 win over the Athletics after. Oh, he retired after the 1964 season. Starting in 1965, Minosa played for the Charos de 
Jalisco of the Mexican League. Playing first base, he batted 360 in his first season, leading off the leg with 35 doubles and 106 runs scored. He continued to play in the Mexican League for the next eight seasons, and he hit 265 with 12 home runs, 83 RBIs in 1973 when he was 47 years old coaching and his final appearances. In 1976, Minosa was called out of retirement to be becoming the first third base coach for three seasons for the White Sox. He also made three game appearances for the White Sox that September in games against the California Angels, picking up one single and eight at-bats and four coming as a designated hitter. A two-out single off Sid Munch on September 12th in the second inning of a 1-2 inning win, becoming at, at age 50 the fourth oldest player to ever get a base hit in the major leagues. In 1980, Minosa, age 54, was activated and he tied the record in the previous day's 12-5 loss on October August the 29th, 1985, Don Baylor broke Minosa's American League record by being hit by pitches 180 times. In 1990, Minosa was scheduled to make an appearance with the minor league Miami Miracle of the Florida State League and become the only professional to play in six decades. However, MLB overruled the Miracle on the ideal. When the last game was played at Comiskey Park during the same season, Minosa was invited to present the White Sox lineup card to the umpires in the pregame ceremonies at the home plate. He did so while wearing the new uniform debuted by the White Sox that day, his familiar number 9 on his back. In 1993, a 67-year-old Minosa made an appearance with the independent St. Paul Saints of the Northern League. He returned to the Saints in 2003 and drew a walk, thus becoming the only player to appear professionally in seven different decades. The earlier extension to his career with the White Sox were, publicly st were publicity stunts orchestrated respectively by one-time owner Bill Veek and his son Mike, who at the time owned partial or controlling interest of the team. Later in his years and death. Minosa lived in Chicago where he represented the Chicago White Sox as Mr. White Sox. He had three children from his first marriage, Arrestus Jr., Cecilia, and Marilyn. His eldest son, Arrestus Jr., briefly played professional baseball. He married Sharon Rice in the 1990s and they had one son, Charles. He became a member of the Chicago Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame in 1984 the Mexican Professional Baseball Hall of Fame in 1996, the Hispanic Heritage Baseball Museum Hall of Fame on August 11, 2002, and the Cuban Baseball Hall of Fame in 2014. Minosa was inducted into the Baseball's Reliquary Shrine of Eternals in 2002 on September 19, 2004, Mini Minosa Day was celebrated at U.S. Cellular Field, and there was a pregame unveiling of a Mini Minosa statue at the field. Minosa received the 2011 Jerome Holtzman Award from the Chicago Base Museum. Then his death. Minosa died March 1, 2015, from a torn pulmonary artery resulting from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. He was 91 years old. A funeral service was held for him at Holy Family Church in Chicago on March 7th with over 1,000 dignitaries, officials, friends, and fans in attendance. For Southsiders, For Southsiders and Sox fans all across the country, including me, Minnie Minosa is all and always will be Mr. White Sox, President Barack Obama said in a statement released by the White House. 
As far as his Hall of Fame candidacy, Minoso became eligible for election in the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1970, a year before the Hall began be considering players from the Negro Leagues or taking into account the accomplishments of major leaguers in the Negro Leagues and was dropped from the ballot for insufficient support. He was restored to the ballot five years later in his final 1980 appearance as a player and finally began to receive support as a candidate, remaining on the ballot for 14 years. Before his eligibility expired, however, most of the writers voting by that point had little money memory of him. During his prime, in 2001, uh, historian Bill James selected Minoso as the 10th greatest left fielder of all time, based on the then general belief that Minoso was born in 1922 rather than 1925. James wrote, he had gotten the chance to play when he was 21 years old. I think he'd probably be rated among the top 30 players of all time. Author Stuart Miller makes the case for Minoso's election based on the wins above replacement, the war statistic, which calculates the number of addition, additional wins a team would get from the player's production compared to having played a replacement level minor league player at the position. Minosa is among the top five American League players in war for seven of his MLB seasons, ranking first in war for two decades for those seasons. Jay Jaffe of Sports Illustrated has written that Minosa's Hall of Fame candidacy may have been damaged by the publicity stunt appearance in his latter life. He said that the biggest question for the Hall of Fame voters would be how much potential Major League production was taken away from Minosa because baseball was integrated at the outset of his career. As far as the Golden Era candidate, Minosa was selected to be on the Hall of Fame's Golden Era Committee election ballot in 2011 and 2014. Since 2011, the Baseball Writers Association of America, the BBWAA Historical Overview Committee, serves as the Hall's screening committee every three years to identify long retired players, managers, umpires, or executives living or deceased from the golden era, 1947 to 73. For possible induction into the Hall of Fame. In order to be inducted, any of the 10 candidates on the ballot must re at re receive at least 12 of 16 votes cast by the 16-member Golden Era, Era Committee of the MLB Winter Meeting in December. In 2011-2014, Minosa received 9 and 8 votes. In 2011, only Ron Santo, with 15 votes, was elected to the Hall of Fame and inducted in 2012. 2014, none of the candidates were elected by the committee. He was voted into the Baseball Hall of Fame on December 5, 1921, and he was formally inducted on July 24, 2022, with his widow Sharon speaking on his behalf. So there you have it. Mini Minosa's biography. Let me go over all his stats for his uh, Hall of Fame induction. Again, Minosa was a left fielder born November 29, 1923 in Perico, Cuba. He died March 1, 2015 at the age of 91 in Chicago, Illinois. He batted right through right. His professional debut NGL 1947 for the New York Cubans. The MLB, April 19, 1949, for the Cleveland Indians. His last MLB appearance, October 5, 1984, uh, 
for the Chicago White Sox. His MLB statistics, his batting average was 299. He had 2,110 hits, 195 home runs, and 1,093 RBIs. Again, the teams he played for in the Negro Leagues, the New York Cubans, 47 to 49. The Major League Baseball teams, Cleveland Indians, 49 51. Chicago White Sox, 51 through 57. Cleveland Indians, 58 and 59. Chicago White Sox, 1960 61. St. Louis Cardinals, 1962. The Washington Senators, 1963. Chicago White Sox, 1964, 76 and 80. His career highlights and awards. Uh, Two-time Nash Negro League All-Star, 47 and 48. Eight, no, nine-time All-Star, 1951 to 54, 57, 59 to 60. Negro World Series champion, 1947, three times Gold Glove Award, 57, 58, and 60. Three times American League Stolen Base, 51, 52, 53. And the Chicago White Sox. So there you go. He became a member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, inducted in 2022 with 87.5% of the vote. Tom Wong, Hell Beans, Arrestress Destrada, with 87.5% of the vote. And the election method was the Golden Day Era Committee. So there you have it, Minnie Minosa's Hall of Fame biography. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, get some, we're getting ready here for our blaster box. There's his Hall of Fame postcard, since I did not have any baseball cards. In case you're wondering what this one is. You can buy these from the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. Other people will try and sell it to you for more. It's better to buy it right from the Hall of Fame. Okay. Let me see if we're doing a regular blaster box or are we doing a blaster box war. Let me see how many thumbs up we got here. We got six viewers, five thumbs up. Thanks there, Sensei. Minoso. Oh, did I say Minosa? Mini Minoso. All right, I only see seven thumbs up, so we didn't quite make it there yet. this box here. See, remember, we're still looking for two cards to complete my set. 113 and 138. Michael Harris II. I've got a bunch of his uh, master photo cards. That's his rookie card this year. And then 138, Hideki Matsui. So that's who we're trying to find basically to finish off my tops base set and then I'll work on getting my inserts another way and we'll see how I how I'm coming along with the color variation set okay let's see who we got here for our Pete Alonzo is our master photo. Pete Alonzo. Can't remember if I got a Pete Alonzo or not. We'll find out when I verify my master photo list. Okay. All 
right, go through here. You won't take too long on me. I've opened up so many of these boxes. Well, I got three more left. At the best, worst case scenario, we do finish this case off this week. Okay, let's put this up here. Uh, no God is great today. Just so you do know, um, I will be doing my live auction on whatnot right after Friday, this Friday's live stream. In case you're wondering. Okay, so we've got George Kirby with the Seattle Mariners. Base. Okay. Oops, Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw with the... Uh, Dodgers, I believe, right? Yep. Base. We've got the Jordan Alvarez. Uh, base. Yep. A Vladimir Guerrero. Platy Daddy. Color variation. It's the black one with the Expos. And Edward Cabrera with the Miami Marlins. Base. Okay. All right. Again, once uh, probably next week, I'll go through and highlight all the good good cards we got out of this set. Not the not the the base cards or the color variation cards, except for the short print ones that I do have. Carlton Fisk with the Boston Red Sox base. Uh, Matt Olson with the Atlanta Braves base. Ooh, we got a Nick Prado. Top Stadium Club Chrome with the Royals. I'll just put it here for now. We'll get it sleeved up later. Uh, Trey Turner, Chief Fantasy. Trey Turner, Chief Fantasy. And last but not least, oh, let's see. Actually, put the chrome down here. And then uh, we've got the uh, Max Meyer rookie card for the Miami Marlins base. Okay, going into pack three. Okay, boom, we got a Ken Griffey Jr. On the back there. Uh, Brandon Crawford with the Giants base. Johnny Bench with Cincinnati Reds base. We got the Babe Ruth base. We got the Jazz Chisholm Jr. Red. And a King Griffey Jr. base. So boom. One more pack. We're halfway through the box now. Again, see if we can get three more thumbs up. Maybe or maybe not. We'll see. Let's see if we open up another blaster box today or wait until tomorrow. Uh, Robbie Ray. Base. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle with the Orioles. Base. Got a Juan Soto base. Got an Aaron Judge color variation, and it's the red one for the Aaron Judge. 
And we've got the Will Brennan rookie card for the Cleveland Guardians base. Okay. Still didn't get that yet, right? 113 and 138. I think I've seen any, either of those two players yet. Go on into the second half of the box now. Okay. Next up, we've got with the Brew Crew, Garrett Mitchell, rookie card. Uh, base. Jose Ramirez with the Guardians. Base. Uh, Matt Chapman. I gotta zoom in a little bit so you guys get a little bit closer view. Matt Olson, base. Now we've got Yogi Berra with a color variation. Sepia. Got the sepia here for Yogi Berra. And then the Corey Seeger with the Rangers. Base. Okay. Pack number six. God is grace in the house. How you doing there, Titus? Thanks for popping into the stream. Appreciate you being here, brother. All right. Who do we got first? We got Jose Altuve. Base. We got the uh, Chris Bryant with the Colorado Rockies. Base. We got the Ryan Sandberg, Hall of Famer. Base. We got the Jonathan Aranda, rookie card. Base. We got the Virtuosus of Velocity, Kyle Schwarberger. And the Robin Yelp Hall of Famer for the Brew Crew base. Okay, pack number seven. Softball night, so fell asleep at 5.30 and just woke up 7 a.m., huh? Did 20 hours of volunteer work. Oh, wow. Busy day yesterday, huh? Josh Gibson. got him playing with there on this. This gives his career totals. Scooperstown card. That's the base card. Okay. Nick Prado, rookie card for the Royals. Now we got Buster Posey with the Giants base. Oswaldo Cabrera, rookie card for the Yankees. Base. Got the Kittel Marte with the Diamondbacks. Red. And the Tom Glavin. On a tropical island somewhere. Base. All right, last pack magic. And then we'll check and see if we made it to double digits or not. Oh, I think we got some bonus cards in this one. Yep, I think we got a bonus card. So we got uh, Chris Sale with the Boston Red Sox. Uh, base. Got Ryan Creedler, rookie card for the Detroit Tigers. Base. Jeremy Pena with the Astros base. I think we got two color variations here. Yeah. We got the Alec Thomas with the Diamondbacks red. Francisco Alvarez with the Mets red. And the Logan Webb with the Giants base. Okay. Let me do one quick refresh, see if we made it to double digits. If 
probably got eight or nine. Dun, dun, dun. Da, 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 da. Eight. Eight. So we'll save it for tomorrow's greatness. Okay, we'll go ahead and get ready to do the two-minute warning here and get ready to log off for today. These are our base cards. These are our sleevable cards. Actually, these are sleevable too. These are all sleevable, except for that one. That don't fit in the sleeve. Nine likes. Nine likes still ain't close enough. But that's okay. That's okay. We need ten. We need ten. Let me uh, do a refresh on this one since that one. Well, it's not letting me do a refresh yet. Okay. There we go. Alright, one last shot. I think we got nine. Nope, I, I still see an eight. So let's just go ahead and end with the two minute warning here and we'll come back tomorrow. I got three blasters left. We'll probably do one each day unless we double up one day. Sorry if I had more channels. There we go. So, uh, get ready to refresh this. Seventeen for the two-minute warning and get everybody logged in here. Uh, Dragon Fan Tim still not here with a two. God is great here, there, and everywhere. As God is great, there we go. God is great with a two plus two. All right, uh, Sensei Dominoes here still with a two. Great. Big raised ball cards with a two. Big ray ball cards is here, here, here. Two, 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 two. Uh, let's see, we'll give cops. Where's Bernie at? Where's Bernie at? Where'd Bernie go? I will watch the beginning. Oh, no problem. It was fun. We did the mini Minosa biography today. And tomorrow. Tomorrow we will be doing, let's see if I can peel it out real quicker. We'll be doing Johnny Mize. Johnny Mize is our Hall of Fame biography for tomorrow. All right, what did we have there? Two minute warning, 15, 16, 17. We'll end the two minute warning in just, just under a minute here. And then we'll get ready to do our sign off and we will see you all tomorrow. We'll see how close we get to 300 entries. And there we go. Sensei Domino, God is great. Y'all have a great night again. Don't forget, this Friday, after my Hall of Fame Friday episode, I'll be doing a live whatnot sale. And I think I might start my cards off at maybe $2 this time. But we'll see. Start it with a lower, lower amount than the, the three. Give these cards, I'll go through these cards one more time. Then I'll start listing on eBay and trying to find some more good stuff to put on there. Might have to dig in into my archives and start bringing out some, some Hall of Fame rookie cards or something. Okay. But we'll see. So... This has been Don Blomp. Oh, let me get this off of here real quick. This has been Don Blomp, the Hall of Fame Biography, episode number 216, Mini Minosa. Trivia Times 2, 2023 Top Stadium Club Blaster Box. 
and everything else. So until tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, it's not just words, but be blessed. Y'all take care. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And we will see you all around the channels. So until next time, take care and have a wonderful and blessed day.